Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, SNS Storm Chasers, meteorologist Joe Weather Long and a host of other uh, places where you can uh, see me. Fios One News, uh, Pix Eleven in New York City, and maybe a few places at this point that I can't think of. Okay, let's um, get this going here with regards to what's happening uh, with uh, the tropics because uh, it's very busy and there's almost a parade with Gaston and 120 mile an hour winds uh, sending uh, high surf to the coastline from southern New England down to uh, the Delmarva Peninsula and there will be dangerous rip current conditions again today. This is being uh, exacerbated a bit by the tropical depression that is now moving northeastward away from North Carolina that still remains relatively weak. Uh, there's always a chance that this could pop into a tropical storm. We do have a cold front that's coming down from the north, so there might be a little bit of a what we call a baroclinic influence or a, 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 a non-tropical influence of energy, kind of like how winter storms intensify. So, you know, you could have something like that happen here. There's another wave that's developing uh, off the South Carolina coast, non-tropical in nature. Uh, and then we have Tropical Depression 9, which um, overnight uh, pressures have uh, dropped uh, down. So uh, this thing is going to be a tropical storm today. I mean, this has been a very frustrating process watching this particular system uh, all along because of the fact that it has taken uh, forever to develop. And sometimes uh, this is how, uh, you know, uh, these things play out. They don't always develop right away. Uh, they, they sometimes take a long time. And in this instance, we have a depression that has been basically stationary for the last 36 hours uh, sitting here in the South Central Gulf. I think that's going to be one of the keys of the forecast going forward uh, is the fact that um, the uh, depression has taken so long to get out of the Gulf of Mexico. And I, I have to give credit to the GFS model because the GFS model has been showing the system meandering in the Gulf. Uh, it showed this over a week ago when the other models uh, were moving it in all sorts of directions, uh, either northwest or into Texas or up the East Coast. So the GFS, I think, has been done a very good job with this. Uh, it takes a lot of heat from people in the, in, in the, uh, professionally, but um, I think sometimes uh, the heat is unjustified and it's um, and people are not always paying close attention. Here's the depression off the Carolinas, and, and you can see here the thunderstorms keep coming and going. Uh, actually, the thunderstorms with the wave to the south look a little bit more impressive uh, than, uh, uh, than what we see. Uh, with uh, the depression that's offshore. But this moving by to the northeast and to our east will enhance uh, the uh, problems with waves. Now, I want to look at, this. Is, these are the uh, overnight spaghetti models, the latest uh, run from uh, 2 a.m. Um, they all seem to take this northeastward and concentrate the track um, off the uh, east coast, uh, well south and east of us. So some of them take a bit of a leftward jog. Uh, but this certainly would suggest that at least from the standpoint of rough surf and rip currents, we're going to have problems here um, right through Labor Day. Uh, so if you've got vacation plans for the shore, just bear that in mind. Anywhere from southern New England down to Delaware, uh, there's going to be some rough surf. And also this, this track uh, suggests uh, that there will be at least tropical storm warnings going up uh, all from Georgia all the way up into uh, North Carolina, coastal North Carolina, and southern Virginia at some point uh, with all this uh, as it takes this track to the northeast. Uh, now, he, this is the um, the GFS um, ensembles, and it's kind of hard to see because they decided to go on this kind of wide picture view here, but uh, they all seem to be clustered just off east of New Jersey and south of Cape Cod right in there. So that's something that uh, we're going to be considering going forward. And I want to point out, we're going to go look at a couple of model runs here, and I don't want anybody to panic because I'm not buying all this um, as is yet. So uh, the mid-run GFS was very interesting in that it has, there's your tropical storm, okay? So now we're into uh, tomorrow, Thursday morning. Um, still sitting in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, it really doesn't come in to la make landfall until 2 a.m. Friday morning, and then the low straddles up the coast and moves northward, and look where it takes it. Now, uh, this is a, a tropical storm that it's showing here, 
and I want you to I want to emphasize a couple of things first off unless you have an accelerating tropical system that's moving at 30 or 40 miles an hour or more once you get north of 35 degrees north it's very hard for those systems to maintain strength so um, I'm not this is not going to be um, a, a hurricane here um, once it gets north of 35 north no matter what it does um, as it moves off the southeast coast let's say if it were a little bit offshore it could strengthen a little bit more if it, it taps the Gulf Stream a little bit but if this were the track I mean this would produce rain and some wind and rough ocean seas and maybe even some tidal concerns but I don't think it would be you know on the order of something major and I'm not forecasting this I want everybody to understand that this is kind of an outlying westward solution that this model offered at 2 a.m. and one of the things and how it gets here okay how it gets into this position this forecast is actually a result of the fact that it's so slow in coming out of the Gulf of Mexico what what's happening is this deep trough that's developing here in the east was supposed to pick this thing up and take it out to sea because um, the models were taking a lot of this uh, pretty quickly northeastward and this trough would catch it and take it out to sea and goodbye but what's happening is because this system continues to meander in the Gulf of Mexico it really it basically misses this trough completely and the bottom part of that trough kind of fractures as we mentioned yesterday and the GFS aggressively cuts it off okay and that's going to be key to the forecast in terms of timing if this tropical system takes longer and longer to make landfall it's going to completely miss that trough and that's going to uh, open up the possibility of a track further and further to the left okay um, right now when we look at the European for example uh, its structure and timing is a little bit different uh, because it takes a little longer for this northern trough to get out of the way because it kind of leaves an arm that's back there so it winds up forcing this to be a little bit for much for a little further to the east and offshore I honestly have to tell you that I still think that that solution makes the most sense uh, because of um, how things usually work up here when it when, with regards to tropical systems and I'll show you the Europeans um, view uh, with regards to the how it, it does the uh, surface low and it kind of does the same thing it did last night um, it takes it inland a little bit faster and then takes it out northeastward east of North Carolina gets east of 70 west and then does this kind of hook back uh, on uh, Monday night into, into uh, Monday afternoon into Monday night and before it goes out to the northeast so this would uh, would imply that uh, the only worries that we would have with this would be um, increasing um, you know that same problem with rip currents and no other uh, weather weather issues um, that would develop out of this so Key keys to the forecast are going to be how, how much development do we get from the tropical depression? How um, fast does it move inland? Is the GFS correct in this continued meandering uh, that we're seeing? And what happens uh, once it moves up along the southeast coast of the United States? Does it by that first trough bypass it completely, allowing it to tuck in along the coast, or does it just to continue to the northeast? Uh, as that northern trough still gives it a little bit of, uh, of influence and takes it out further offshore. Uh, these are all questions we're going to be answering, and we'll be answering them on meteorologistjoechoffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, and also uh, SNS Storm Chasers. So be sure to keep tuned to this as we go through the day.